What's up guys, my name is Liam, and in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Mad Lions Mad G. I've been getting several requests to take a look at this. So in this video, I'm going to be breaking down how my experience has gone with this so far, how it stacks up compared to some of the competition out there, and hopefully I'll be able to help you decide whether or not this could possibly be the perfect game of mouse for you. So let's check it out. And before we get started today, I did want to let you know this was sent out to me by Mini XPC. However, everything you'll be hearing in this video is going to be my own words and my own opinions. So shout out to Mini XPC. If you haven't already checked out their web store, I will leave links down for you in the description to check them out. Included inside the box, just to let you know, this is the original Mad G version. They also do have a Max version. So with the non-Max version, this does come with an additional set of larger skates. And as you can see, these are these dyed. PTFE skates. It does come with some user documentation. USB-C to USB Type-A cable. These rubberized grips, and these actually do feel pretty rubberized and grippy. And then this version, it does come with a dongle adapter and the 1K wireless receiver. So this does not come with 8K capability. You do have to get the Max to get the 8K capability. And as far as I can tell, this possibly uses a different chipset, which I'll go over here just shortly. And this version doesn't look like it is upgradable to 8K. As far as I can tell, I didn't see any type of mention of a extra 8k wireless receiver that you can purchase separately all right so taking a look at the mouse we will start out over here on the bottom i really do like the skate design that this does come with i do kind of wish that this top skate design was a little bit bigger but again these are these dyed ptfe skates so i do kind of wish they came with something a little better like some 100 virgin ptfe skates but aside from that real simple functionality where you have your on and off button over here on the right side back over at the top i've actually been very impressed with how this mouse has felt Coming in at the price point that it does come in at, it does come with a coating and the coating on it for me has felt pretty grippy. So I have been enjoying it. I've even taken this mouse apart and put it back together. And the whole time that I've been using it and testing it out, I have not come across any issues yet with the shell integrity. So it has felt pretty solid to me. Even squeezing really hard here in the middle, you can get just a little bit of bend, but I would say that the integrity on this, even squeezing really hard up here in the front, it does feel pretty solid. And like I said, nothing has really stood out to me. For mouse one and two, if you get the max version, this does come with the Omron Opticals. With the original, this does come with Huano, I believe they're called Iceberry uh, powder dot switches. And honestly, I really like these switches. They feel pretty good. I wouldn't say that they feel a whole lot further from something like the Juano Blue Shell Pink Dots, but comparing them to the Omron Opticals, they do feel a bit heavier, a little bit more tactile and clickier. So even though you can still spam these clicks, like I said, I was kind of going back and forth and just kind of test this and be testing it to the Maya X with the Omron Opticals in it. And the Omron Opticals do definitely feel quite a bit lighter and easier to spam uh, in my opinion. But the click implementation on this has honestly felt really solid. You get like barely any pre-travel, goes right into a click. Even the post travel on it feels pretty solid. Just a little bit of play up here in the front, but nothing too major. So the click implementation on this all the way from front to back honestly feels really great. I haven't noticed any major side to side play or teetering or anything like that. So yeah, the clicks on this really solid. For the scroll wheel, it does have a rubberized ring. You do notice some pretty small defined steps there. As you can hear them, I'll demonstrate that here shortly in the sound test. And the center scroll click, I would say you could spam it. It's a little bit on the stiffer end, but nothing too bad. And then next up for the side buttons. And you know, I'm just gonna come out and say that I'm just pretty impressed with this mouse. Like you get a little bit of play there, but really for a budget style mouse, these side buttons, they do feel really good. Just the design of them, uh, the entire time they do have a nice lightweight click. Once you do actually click them, a little bit of post travel there, nothing too bad, but does hit a solid wall back here. And you don't notice any major side to side rocking on these side buttons. So yeah, honestly, the build quality and feeling on the, of this in the hands for the price that's coming at, it honestly feels really good. So let's go ahead and we will drop the click quality sound check.
For the weight and balance, the one thing that was appealing to me about this original copy is that it does come with a 250 milliamp hour battery, whereas the Max version comes with a 500 milliamp hour battery. So this version actually should be lighter than the Max version. I kind of wish that with the Max version that they did offer the lighter battery, but front to back and left to right on this has felt really good for me for the balance. Throwing this on my scale, Looks like it's coming in at 45.2 grams. For the software, they're using a web-based driver. It does allow you to come in here and adjust things like the DPI. Next up over here on the performance settings tab, um, I've been using this with the performance mode enabled and the ultra long range mode also enabled as well. So this does allow you to do things like adjust your liftoff distance, um, pulling rate. Like I said, this mouse is a maximum pulling rate of the 1000 Hertz. The next up over here on the keystroke anti-shake delay, I have been using this at the one millisecond and I haven't come across any issues as I've been using as far as stability on the clicks goes. So when it does come to the performance, the max version does come with the Nordic 52840 inside of it. Um, I'm not sure what controller or microcontrollers does come with. They have it listed as some type of a phase deep controller or something like that. I have no idea what it means. Um, I do want to let you guys know I did hook this up to my XLAT. I was getting numbers off of it, so here's a shot of that. With that being said, I'm not going to chart these numbers or anything like that because I'm not really too sure how accurate this is. I was getting some inconsistencies, and if you look over here at my results on the XLAT, I feel like the standard deviation is really high. And since I don't have a secondary system to confirm these results, like I said, I wouldn't take these results too seriously until I'm able to double check on them. All right, so when it comes to the shape of this mouse, honestly, just right out of the box, I've really been enjoying this shape a lot. As you can see, it does have the curves down here on the bottom. I don't feel like they're too aggressive or anything like that. Even going from bottom to top here is a little bit on the flatter end. So just the size and the shape of this, I don't feel like the hump on it is too aggressive or anything like that. Has a nice natural fall off. So yeah, really liking this shape a lot. And as a matter of fact, one of the closest things that I think that I could probably compare it to would be something like the Lamzu Maya X. So when taking a look at both of these next to each other, looking at the bottom profile, I do kind of feel like over here, the Mad G does have a little bit more aggressive flare outs where the Maya X does feel just a little bit more flat from front to back over here. But putting these together, not a whole lot difference in the grip width. My X might be just slightly a little bit wider due to the more curves over here, but not a whole lot of differences. Looking at the top curve profile from the top down the sides, that's what that looks like. Again, just the overall scale of these, they don't feel a whole lot further from one another, even the curve profile from front to back. Alright guys, so that about wraps things up on the Mad Lions Mad G. And truly, I've been really enjoying this mouse. It has a really solid shape, and the feeling of it in the hands has been really impressive. I do feel like they've done some uh, kind of questionable things here with the build on this. Um, I'm not sure why they did a whole different CPU in this from this and the Max. Um, I was kind of a little confused by picking this up that I thought this would also have the 8K wireless capability. If you're okay with just having the 1K pulling rate and you really care that much more about paying a little bit less, you're still going to be getting really great value for what you're getting here. But as far as the Max goes, I do wish that they did offer the Max also with a 250 milliamp hour battery. It's kind of unfortunate that it does make it a little heavier weight. But I do think that I would be interested in checking out that version the fact that it does come with the Omron Opticals. However, if you are on a budget and this mouse does look appealing to you, I can absolutely say for the price point that this is coming in at, it has really impressed me and I have been really enjoying it and I would recommend checking it out. So if you guys have any additional questions or feel like I left anything out, please let me know in the comments down below. If you've enjoyed watching this video and are interested in seeing more videos like this in the future, please drop this video a like and subscribe to my channel. And thank you guys so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next one.